Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield here in Las Vegas, and there is no better or more appropriate show to talk about than Vegas, all in capital letters, the show. It's on here at Planet Hollywood, and it is a ton of fun. It really celebrates the best of Las Vegas. Variety, singing, dancing, acrobats, magicians, everything is in the show, and Tej Yancey is here with us today. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, congratulations on A being you. You look so cool. If I could look like you, it would be a dream. I look like this dork in this silly jacket and the silly shoes. You pull it off brilliantly. Well, actually, I just complimented the shoes, so I don't know how silly they are. I, I, I would wear those. You would? I absolutely would. Well, I must have a bit of style. There you go. <laughs> hey, listen, tell me about this show then. Vegas, the show. I've seen it many times over the years. And the great thing is you can come back night after night. It's always different because there's always new acts. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the great thing about the concept of the show. It's, it's like old Vegas selling celebrating old Vegas and uh, you're right uh, anytime someone says they've seen it I always ask them when did you see it last because uh, there's, they're always adding something new and keeping it fresh which also keeps it fresh for us which is nice let's talk about you where you got started how you've arrived here in Las Vegas I mean for anybody in show business this must be the Mecca yeah well I'm, I'm originally from uh, the East Coast I'm from Boston originally and so uh, I went to New York first that's sort of my that was always my dream to go to New York and I worked there and great thing about this business I always say you know it, it keeps you on your toes as a dancer no pun intended you know um, so I actually went to New York and, and booked a show that was traveling touring and ended up coming out stopping in Vegas for a while and I got here and said wow I like Vegas you know there's a lot of work here and so I just ended up here just just by doing what I do like a lot of artists do you're one of those people that sticks out and you catch the eye. I mean, that's the point, isn't it? And I was just saying earlier, I mean, we're sat here at the moment in Stripper 101, which is this class that teaches stripping. And uh, Pony said very graciously that anybody can do it. I disagree. A lot of people can't do it and they shouldn't do it and shouldn't even consider doing it. Um, it's a bit like dance, singing, anything. If you've got the gift, you're always going to stick out. Did you always know that you were destined to make a career of it, not just a hobby? Yeah, I mean, I, I did. I don't, I don't know. I, you know, I have a lot of performer friends who, you know, found out later or whatever, but I just happened to, I started out at, uh, in a brother-sister act with my, my sister at eight, eight years old. So I've always had the bug. It just happened to be something I always knew. As a kid, I didn't think career so much. I just thought I really love what I do. Fortunately, as you get older, you think, oh, okay, you can make money and have, you know, uh, make a living out of this as well as have fun. So I, I personally always knew. And what is it you do that made you stick out? Have you ever put your finger on what made you unique? Because let's face it, there's a million dancers out there, aren't there? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, yes, there are. Um, I, I, I recognize that, you know, with a lot of help from teachers and things like that, you know, that I was a versatile artist. I'm a singer, I'm a, I'm a dancer, different forms of dance. I'm an actor, I'm a musician. So I've, I've literally run the gamut in terms of the things I've been blessed to do as an artist uh, so for me my personal strength is my versatility and again when we look at your career and arriving here in Vegas I, I'm always fascinated how you view it as a Brit for me if I'm in variety or entertainment coming to Vegas has got to be the dream um, compared to Broadway or the West End how does this fit in how excited you are to be here well, it's one of the, I mean, you know, uh, any place called the entertainment capital of the world has to be pretty cool if you're an entertainer, you know. Um, I've, I've, I've actually been fortunate to work in Broadway, on Broadway and in the West End and different places and stuff. So I've, I've you know, the great thing about this, this, this profession is you do get to travel. I've been overseas many times and things like that. So I've, I've you know, they're all different in terms of, I guess, their reputations and things like that. But for me, it's all art. It's all, you know the love of it, whether you're, you know, on Broadway or whether you're in a little rinky-dink bar playing with a band, you know what I mean, so. Exactly, and if you love it, it's going to come across to the audience. Your work on Broadway and in New York, tell us about that and what you did and how successful you were at it. Well, I, uh, first of all, success for me is, is, is doing it, you know, and, and enjoying it. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to do, I've done lots of different shows, uh, Five Guys Named Mo, I actually did Starlight Express, the tour of that. Uh, uh, lots of uh, did play a play in New York called Sueños, uh, which is Spanish for dreams. Um, and uh, you know, my first tour actually was with a band that went to 15 cities in China, Hong Kong, Japan. And that was uh, I was actually in college. That was the summer of my between my freshman year and sophomore year. Uh, so you know, I, I've just been I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to to see the world and and do it. Uh, you know, see it by doing what I love to do. 
And again, it's interesting. I mean, when you look at Five Guys or when you look at Starlight, they're both sung through shows where you can't fake it. What I love about Broadway is if you're trying to pretend, you're going to be caught out very quickly. Um, I'm always curious about that feeling when the pin focus hits you and it's all about you and you've got to nail it. Is there anything more thrilling to be stood on a stage and having hundreds, if not thousands, staring at you and you've got to deliver? Is that what you live for? Well, honestly, you know, a lot of people, I think, live for that moment because the idea of being the center of attention, and that's a very ego-driven thing. For me, I actually, I, of course, I love that moment, but for me, I love it because of what it takes to get there. For me, it's all about the preparation. I put, you know, the work I put in, the training I put in, and I say in the present tense because I continue to. Uh, is what makes that moment thrilling for me. And of course the applause and, and, and the appreciation uh, heightens it even more. So for me it's more than just, oh I'm, I'm center stage with a spotlight on me. You know, it's like I've worked to get here, I continue to work to, to be prepared to be here. So that's, that's more thrilling for me than anything. And then here we are in Vegas, a community that is so large. I can't. I don't think there's a place with more entertainers within one square mile. Let's face it. Um, how do you fit into that? How fun is it to be around people who are brilliant at what they do? Well, it's like it's it's sort of like you know I'm from the East Coast, so I'm, uh, it's like having family close by is what it feels like in a lot of way, in a lot of ways. It really uh, performers and entertainers and, and and other artists, whether they're performing artists or or other kinds of artists, really for me feel like an, an extended family you know even if you don't know them well there's some there's this real connection that you have you know you can look at someone you've never met or stood face to face with and they're a fellow artist and you just feel like we get each other we we can relate to each other and there's a support system so from that perspective it's great and then of course this show celebrates people who have dedicated the, their lives to very specific um, unique acts in many cases. Um, I, I find that inspired that you could put together a six minute act that you can tour around the world for your entire life and people like that are in this show. Um, do you marvel at that? Because it takes a certain discipline, doesn't it? Just to master your art and keep churning it out as well as you did the first time, the second time, the millionth time. Absolutely, I, I, do, I do marvel at it. I, I think, uh you know, like you, like you mentioned, it, it certainly takes a discipline to do that. Uh, and, you know, for me personally, the love of it, that's what fuels it. You know, if you don't love what you're doing, whatever, whatever it is, uh, why do it? Um, that's just my personal feeling about it. So, but I, yeah, I, I absolutely marvel at how you keep it fresh. And, you know, I think audiences, uh, I certainly hear that a lot after the show, during meet and greet people, they love the show and they say, how do you, you know, you look like you're having a good time. I said, that's because I am. Right. And if you're not going to have a good time here, there's no point doing it. It doesn't get any bigger, does it, in terms of what you do? Absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, I think uh, a, lot, you know, a lot of times we're conditioned uh, at an early age, you know, make a living, you know, you know, you got to kind of get into the, the grind mentality. And I think that can sometimes backfire because you think you have to work hard and it's hard and stre strenuous and, and uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be. And again, to be in this town of so many talented people, is it humbling in one respect that you can be replaced at any point, therefore you've got to keep at the top of your game, and be the fact that you're surrounded by all these people you can learn from and you work with? It's definitely humbling uh, to, to, to be around, work with uh, so many incredibly talented people. You know, I, my feeling about the whole replacement thing is, you know, that's always the case. I mean, at any time that could happen anywhere. But I don't think of it that way. I mean, I, I, I really try to stay, I don't look too far forward or too far behind. I try to stay in the moment and appreciate what I'm doing at, now because at the end of the day, you can replace the person, but there's only one Tez or there's only one Alex or there's, you know what I mean? So from that perspective, we're irreplaceable in that sense. And I love the, the fact that you're so brave to stand there every night and do it. There's a certain mentality you've got to have to, to walk out with confidence, because that's what it's about, isn't it? And even when you walk in a room, you've got to look about you. Did that happen by accident, or do you have to work hard at that? I mean, is, is this a front, or is this a reality? <laughs> no, I'm, you know, the, you know that saying, Chase, living the dream. People say, oh, I'm living the dream. I always say I'm living the reality, because I really don't want to live a dream. I want to live in the reality. And, and uh, you know, in terms of the confidence thing, that uh, a lot of the credit goes to the people that supported me my family early on teachers that goes a long way when you're an artist coming up people encouraging you as well as giving you a push when need be and understanding that balance is crucial in my opinion to how you go forward when you you hear enough times you can do this at, when other people believe in you when maybe you're doubting you there are times when that happens even to this day um, 
that's important to have those kinds of people. And then the other part of it certainly is uh, having confidence in yourself. And for me, it comes from, you know, a much higher source in my, for me. Uh, so I walk with that knowing that, you know, my back is, is gotten, so to speak. And on those days when you're tired, I mean, you're doing an enormous amount of shows a week, more than anybody ever would on Broadway or in the West End, albeit these are slightly shorter shows. Um, where do you pull that energy from then? What, what is that spirituality that gets you back on stage? Well, you know, I, I remember I had, I had a great director say one time, you know, bring, bring your day with you. You know, there's some people, it's different philosophies. Some people come from the school of like, you know, we're going on, you know, going on stage or on a set or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, and you, you sort of drop everything and you go into your training mode. And some people believe, take, take with you what you have and use that. And that's the great thing about art is that you can use it. Some days you are more tired and obviously you don't want to show that, but you can certainly sort of draw from that in terms as an actor. Um, I mean, because the, the reality is there are days when you're going to be tired, when you're doing eight or 10 or 12 shows a week. It's just inevitable, you know, we aren't machines. But you draw from the training and you draw from me from the love. And not, and sort of, I think embracing that. Okay, I'm tired, I'm gonna dig a little deeper. You embrace it as opposed to ignoring it or trying to pretend it's not there, you know? And of course, you're a very good looking man and incredibly thin as well. And you're in a town where there's a buffet on every corner. How do you avoid the spice buffet where you could put on a thousand pounds within a week and a half? <laughs> well, first of all, I appreciate the compliment. Thank you. Um, I, you know, <laughs> clean living. I mean, it's just like, you know, when I first came to Vegas, I said to my mom, hey, mom, I got a job that took me out to Vegas. She said, Vegas, don't gamble. You know, and I actually had never had a desire to. I've never, I've never gambled since I've been to Vegas. So, you know, it, it's the same thing with me. I just have, there's a certain discipline that it takes as a performer for me. Some people can do other things and that works for them. But for me, I, you know, I've always, I needed to, you know, live clean and take care of myself and do all the right things in terms of that discipline. So that makes it easy because I think if I eat that, I'm going to have a hard time on stage tonight. You know what I mean? So that helps. And it is a tough town. I mean, even since I've been here, I'm at about 60% with my voice. There's something about this air that is tough for performers. And I'm not talking all day. I'm just meeting you as a one-off. Um, there's a great pressure there. I don't know how Celine and Rod and these people do it, knowing that the air is so dry, it's so hot outside, and you've still got to nail it. Yeah, well, I'll be honest with you. You know, as, as, as a singer, you know, when I first started working in this town, I, I, I did have some, some issues. It was, it was tough uh, because, it's, let's, let's face it, we're in the middle of a desert, you know, and it's dry air. And, but um, fortunately, I adjusted. And, and uh, that's, thank God that happened because obviously you would have a tough time trying to be a singer in a town where you can't sing. So, yeah, there's certainly some, uh, some disadvantages just by, by virtue of it being a desert, but, but I've gotten past it. Congratulations on being you. It's always nice to meet people who love what they do and know why they do it and don't get carried away with the nonsense of it. Because let's face it, in this town, you could be out every night at an opening or a closing, as many of the cases may be. It's a brutal town in that way. I was saying to somebody the other day, I think something like 90% of shows shut within six months. The great thing about Vegas, the show, is it's been here for years and will be because it is the backbone of what this town's about, variety. Well, you said it, you spot on. I mean, you know, uh for me being a part of a show like this specifically is uh, with the school I come from I come from the school of you know I would, before I ever did Vegas the show I was a huge Sammy Davis Jr. fan a Gregory Hines fan Michael J. P., you know James Brown people that strictly came use their talents and so for me it was you know it's it was and still is very easy to get into that mode because it's like this is the school I come from so to, you know to be a part of a show that celebrates that in the town where they did it is, uh, well, it's a blessing. And it never leaves you, does it? When you walk through this town, you think of all the people who have performed and are still doing. I mean, it used to be a town where you came here to die. It's a place now where you come to live. You're in a casino where Britney Spears performs. There's never been more buzz about Planet Hollywood, has there? Absolutely. I mean, exactly. And I think that's interesting. I'm glad you pointed that out, you know, how things sort of come full circle you know this this was a town at one point where like you said you come to die which is ironic how do you come to die in the entertainment capital of the world so it has come full circle to the days when it was alive and buzzing day and night you had day shows night shows and that's what you have now and i think it's great that vegas the show is is really um paving the way and leading the way in in that uh and bringing that back Tess, congratulations on being you if people want to find out a bit more about you have you got a website 
I do. Uh, uh, tezworld.com, T-E-Z-Z-World.com uh, is where you can pretty much find everything about Tez, hence the name. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time. You can find him here at Vegas, the show, performing about six times a day, seven days a week. <laughs> uh, you're always here. There'll be a show starting sooner or later, won't there? That's right, seven o'clock tonight, although I'm, I'm, I'm taking a break tonight, which is nice. But uh, yeah, the show runs seven days. There's a uh, seven o'clock and 9 p.m. show. Uh, so, you know, and they have different cast members. So it's always a fresh show, which is just great to be part of. Really great to talk to you. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.